the topic I'm going to cover <coughs> is the treatment of aortic arch obstruction by stent <coughs> implantation in uh, adolescents and adults. Uh, this is the bare metal stance that uh, we've been using during these years, starting for the original Palma shots, which is not available anymore, I think, and it's been replaced by the some kind of uh, similar stand, which is the Genesis. Then we have the CP stand, and more recently we started to use the semi-open cell design, which is the Andra stand. Well, this is a paper we published uh, in European Art Journal some years ago about uh, stenting coartation, and uh, our experience uh, up to 2001 consists upon 180 patients with both native and recurrent coartation of the aorta. And we've been using bare metal stents in more of a bit more than 50% of the patient and cover stents in the other part. And I will uh, explain you why there is this difference. Well, the stent was successfully implanted in both group of patients, either by bare metal stent and uh, cover stents, with no significant difference for age, weight, gender, and type of coartation. Uh, the difference was that uh, in the group of cover stent, we, we've been treating more complex and more severe form as compared to bare metal stents. In both groups, we could reduce the peak-to-peak -peak pressure gradient in the cath lab, as you see here, and increase the vessel diameter. This is a typical example of uh, a moderate, discrete coartation in a young man, as seen by angiography and CT scan. And that's the angiogram and the CT scan immediately after placement of the bare metal stand with the complete disappearance of the gradient across the stenotic point. Well, this is another example with a funny anatomy, or say a typical coartation anatomy. You see an hypoplastic, transverse arch, and a hugely dilated descending aorta with a discrete stenosis there. We've been discussing with our surgeon how to treat this uh, patient, and uh, they were very happy to give this patient to us for treatment because they were not happy at all in treating this. When you have such a discrepancy between the pre and post stenotic vessel, the risk of slipping of the stent during implantation is very high. That's why in this particular case, we are using rapid pacing for stent deployment in order to reduce the cardiac output during stay deployed, during inflation of the balloon. And this is the final result. Actually, not very w good for the aesthetic point of view, but hemodynamically, the gradient was zero, and uh, the, 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 the stenosis was completely abolished. Well, we've been successful uh, for the hemodynamic point of view in treating the patient with bare beta stents, but we had two major complications. One aortic rupture in a patient who had a recurrent coartation plus an aneurysm, and another patient we experienced an periaortic hematoma or nearly rupture, if you like. And this is the, the case. You see the tight coartation with the kink and distortion of the aortic isthmus that the stent implanted, abolishing the stenosis, but you see the shadow here that uh, represents a periaortic hematoma. We've been treating this patient uh, conservatively after these pictures con, uh, from CT scan and after 
a couple of days, the periodic hematoma dissolved, resolved spontaneously, and uh, the final result was excellent. But the, there was a significant and real uh, severe complication of nearly aortic rupture. So we, we've been using uh, uh, this kind of Mermeta stents with very successful results. But some problems or complications cannot be avoided completely, like aneurysm formation, dissection, or wall rupture. So the, the question is, or was some years ago, whether cover stents could improve the results and reduce or avoid the complications. And in addition, the question was, can we treat even more complex or severe types of coarctation by using cover stents? That's why we introduced in the clinical practice this cover stent, the CP and Advanta. And this is our preliminary paper reported some years ago on uh, cover stent implantation. So this is an example of a coarctation with an aneurysm where a simple bare metal stain probably could not solve the problem completely, while a cover stent uh, was very successful in abolishing completely the aneurysm. That's another case of isthmus apoplasia, where the risk of uh, overdilating the uh, stenotic semen was considerably high, but with cover stent implantation, we solved the problem with no problems. That's another e example of a complex cohort with uh, multiple aneurysm. This is a cover stent implantation with the aim of uh, abolishing the aneurysm as well, and that's the immediate result. So good li lumen of the aorta and disappearance of the uh, aneurysm. That's a very severe isthmus hypoplasia and that's a cover stent implantation. Again, uh, restoring the good flow across the vessel without extravasation of contrast, aneurysm, or wall rupture. That's another interesting example uh, of a nearly interrupted aortic isthmus. You see just a tiny passage or contrast, less than one millimeter, just enough to allow a coronary wire to get through, predilating a bit with a coronary balloon, establishing an art, a venous circuit, an arteroarteral circuit, and advancing then a larger balloon to enlarge a bit more the stenotic lumen and allow the passage of uh, a long sheet with the cover stent. That's a cover stent that is expanded with the balloon as usual. And uh, you will see in a second the final the result with nice reconstructed uh, vessel uh, lumen. And by having a cover stent, we could also use a larger balloon to further delay the stent and to reach more or less the final vessel lumen. That's another case of a young adult with extreme coartation or interruption, complete interruption, and e exactly what we discovered in the cat lab. There is no anterior flow at all. That's the uh, simultaneous injection within the two catheters. So that's a, a very short uh, shelf of interruption. So the possibility of treating this arthritic segment, we think, is a reality. Actually, we perforated the arthritic segment with the radio frequency wire, which is snare from above. And uh, with this circuit, it's possible to advance a coaxial catheter. You see, we now have a little perforation of this atretic segment, large enough to advance a balloon, 
to enlarge a bit the the vessel advance a long sheet advance in a cover stent on the balloon and expand it you remember there was a completely atretic segment and that's the final result after perforation of the atretic segment and the implantation of a cover stent again we can post dilate by reaching the final normal lumen of the descending aorta. No anomalies, no extravasation, no contrast, no rupture. And this is another extreme case of 62 years uh, patient who was admitted to the hospital for uh, an acute myocardial infarction uh, he was brought to the cath lab in another institution for primary uh, coronary angioplasty, but uh, our colleagues that started the procedure from the femoral artery could not advance the catheter across the aortic arch because complete interruption. So they did the uh, coronary angioplasty and stent implantation by the radial approach, and then sent the patient to us for a treatment court. And uh, this is the anatomy, a complete interruption of the aortic isthmus. We did the same, perforation of the atretic segment with the radio frequency wire, then uh, implantation of a cover stent with excellent result. We did not experience any serious complication by using cover stent, while in the bare metal stent during follow-up, we experienced two cases of aneurysm formation uh, many months after the first procedure. This is the uh, patient, 17 years old, uh, critical cord. When uh, you see we implanted a bare metal stent with uh, fairly good results immediately because uh, we left the patient with just a 20 millimeters of mercury residual gradient and nice flow across the cord, as you see here. However, during follow-up, there was evidence of CT scan and the catheterization formation of an aneurysm at the site of uh, bare metal stent implantation. So we brought the patient to the cath lab. The angiography confirmed the aneurysm formation and then, in this particular patient, we implanted a cover stent within the previously implanted bare metal stent. And by doing so, we could uh, abolish the residual gradient from 20 millimeter mercury to zero and uh, getting rid of the aneurysm. That's another case of uh, the aneurysm that uh, form from uh, the previously implanted bare metal stent. This is uh, the cover stent that we implanted within the bare metal stent. And as you will see in a second, we could abolish completely the aneurysm. No serious complications occur during follow-up or in the group of bare metal st or the cover stands. This is the possibility of uh, also redilate the cover stand if needed. So this is also a big advantage because you, in some electric cases you can uh, put a stand without reaching the complete lumen to reduce the risk of complication and after a few months go ahead and redilate the stents. So the major advantages of cover stents versus bare metal stents of course is a less risk of unwanted damage of the aortic wall. And in my opinion we have the strong indication for using cover stents in subatretic or atretic coartation in coartation with uh, aneurysm the coartation with associated 
PDA that sometimes may occur. The better indication for COVID-10, when you have a discrete stenosis without severe isthmus hypoplasia, probably the bare metal stents can do the same job. However, I prefer to use COVID-10 anyway. Or when you have the risk of uh, obstructing the side vessel uh, origin by using uh, COVID-10. But if you look at our experience during the uh, the years from 2000 on, you see from 2000 to 2003, we've been using only bare metal stents because the cover stents were not available actually. But since we started to use the cover stent from uh, 2004 to, uh, to now, the cover stents uh, are the vast majority of the patients. So our suggestion is to use cover stent as much as you can because the risk of uh, complication is significantly reduced. Okay, so we need a cooperation among interventional cardiologists, radiologists, because the imaging is also very important to achieve uh, uh, good results. Okay, thank you very much for your attention.